Hello, 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 everybody. We are jumping on to share a little bit about our journey, our family Christmas mission. And I don't even know what day we're on right now. Um, so Merry Christmas, though, to everybody. Merry <laughs> Christmas. And um, see if anyone jumps on with us for... <clears throat> He has a tickle in his throat, so if you get a couple coughs, but um, turns out I am ticklish. <laughs> Him and his jokes. Um, so we want to share a little bit of our journey of our process to this family Christmas mission, and um, just there's there's so much there's so much um to all of it so so much um but we started this journey so now it is we're on the 26th mm -hmm. hi sherry hi sherry um mm -hmm. 27th the 27th, 27th. Yep. um and we started this on the 17th the 17th right. <laughs> So we loaded up our um, our van. Um, we first had to get our um, hitch put on, our hitch package put on to our van. Um, that was a fun little journey in itself. We had one that would, hi, Melissa. We had one that would um, do it, so on. So just from the beginning, the whole process, and I will say that we did all of this and Alec was just telling me as of today, our GoFundMe has been up for one month. One month today. One month today. Mm -hmm. Like we started this process <clears throat> and got the download and felt led to push this out and do this. And we yep. just kind of took <clears throat> off running. Because as soon as we decided, we set up the GoFundMe right away. As soon as we made the decision. Yeah. So that was literally November 27th. Yeah, um, mm -hmm. so we went through five cities, five major cities, starting in Dallas, Texas, and um, worked our way through New Mexico, worked our way through Phoenix, Los Angeles, to Sacramento. We actually took it up to Placerville through Folsom and then ended in Sacramento um, because of the time that we got here. Um, and... <coughs> The process starting in as we hitched up our vehicle, we got everything done in the nick of time to get on the road. Um, and we rolled out of the driveway, which was a picture that I posted with all of the kids, with the dog, with the 500 hoodies in the back of the car. Alex, like, thinking to himself, oh, my goodness, what did we do? I was terrified. <laughs> we stuck a hitch on the back of our car. We put this little 4 by 8 U-Haul trailer on it. And I looked, and I'd never seen my car so low to the ground. And the chains the guy installed onto the hitch were actually dragging on the ground. And the guy at U-Haul was like, eh, it should be okay. You know, I crossed him over, and Not I'm like... Not okay. Yeah, so it was just frightening to me. I'm thinking I'm going to destroy my car. My tires are going to be hitting the wheel well or something weird. I just had all kinds of crazy, you know, fears going on. So, but did we let fear stop us? <clears throat> nope. <laughs> I did as much math as I could about what the car could hold and tow. Threw a few things back into the trailer that were in the trunk of the car or whatever you call the back hatch of the of our minivan. And uh, we took off very carefully. <laughs> because I literally was afraid that I was going to be dragging the hitch all along the way. And we made it to Dallas, no problems, and drove all the way up um, to, I guess, North Dallas. Met our friend Paul up there, and yeah. So, Lighten with... the load a little bit. Yeah, with the first... Uh, Give away our first 100 hoodies. Emmanuel. And Paul, our friend Paul, Paul Ballast Ballesteros, uh, runs a mission called Emanuel Labor, and it's in McKinney, Texas, and it was an amazing experience up there, um, just ministering to our friends up there who are homeless on the streets. <laughs> if you're our kids, yeah, we... Just so you know, they're taking uh, care of. Someone's watching them. <laughs> yeah, purportedly. Yeah. And um, 
So if you hear Emmanuel at the door, that's who's at the door. That's our youngest. He yep. keeps telling us Emmanuel's at the door. Um, so, and the only reason we don't have the kids in here doing it with us, we wouldn't get two words out. So. Yeah, they sort of had their own ideas about, you know, what we should be doing and what our responsibilities are. <laughs> So, with that said, we went to our first spot in Dallas, um, picked up the kids from school, got on the road, got to mm -hmm. Dallas, and our first Terrified adventure, um, you were, but I, I wasn't, um, <clears throat> I, it's really simple, guys, the if the have. Lord told us to do it, which I knew without any doubt whatsoever, um, that's what kept me going. That's what kept me going. Okay. Like he told us to do this. I saw the vision of us pulling the U-Haul behind us. I saw the process. Can you grab him, please? He got in. <laughs> we locked and, the door, but. Okay. I know. Can you grab him, please, before the come rest here. of. And okay, so with that said, I knew that I knew that I knew. Come here that um it was gonna be okay i didn't know the outcome i didn't know how it was all gonna work um along the way but he gave me enough clarity and enough understanding that the process um was gonna take place he showed us exactly um the cities that we were gonna go through um he didn't know exactly who we were all connecting with um, but he showed us and I had the vision. I had what I needed to see and I just knew that it was all going to take place. And, um, Hey, can you go tell Elijah, please? I did. Okay. And, um, with that said, I, we just knew. So we got to Dallas, we got to, um, our first destination, and it was actually really peaceful. It was really um, I'm back. Just he's back. Um, Paul's done an amazing job to bring the presence of Jesus there, and love, and compassion, and um, the way that it was done was. Um, my brain just went blank. So the, the I would I would say he has created a real like culture of honor among the homeless community there. Where the where serving. my brain just went um storage facility storage facility. Mm -hmm. So that's where he does it. So that's he where we went by first. Addressing that need for people yes. to store things to store things, but. Yeah. So storage facilities where we started, it was gated in, so the kids got to be part of it. You know, over there, part of the whole thing, but it was more. Um, kind of just an atmosphere of connection and just love and everybody was singing Christmas carols and and yeah, we were Christmas movies at Christmas movie and Paul there. just did an awesome job so yeah. Lainey and Paul just did an awesome job and people were so grateful very grateful to have us there and to receive the hoodies and and um so the kids and all of us got to pass out you know the first I, I would say we passed out about 35 40 hoodies and um and we got to leave him with some of the extra hoodies that he would continue um, to do and pass out the rest. And just the process of that was awesome. So that was day one. So we get to Dallas and we get out of there. Then we have to drive another like three and a half to four hours to get to where we need to go next. Um, good night. And um, our hotel. Our, yeah. we get to our hotel and we have a couple littles that um, become congested and we're dealing with some uh, croup stuff and just some different things along the way. And I'm like, really? We don't, we don't need these extra things along the way. Like, we, we don't need this. So just the process of life. And, you know, when you're in a hotel, you all know, maybe you don't, that you get more congested. Um, so just things I had to factor for with the kids, um, plus the dog. Yeah. So <clears throat> it was 81 degrees in, in Dallas, 81 degrees. Then we drive up to, um, 
We drove to, our next stop was Albuquerque. Albuquerque. Yeah. And Albuquerque dropped to about 16 degrees that night. 16 degrees, yeah, guys. 16 degrees. Six. 16. So, by and the then when we woke up. By the time we got there, it was probably already dropping into the 20s. Yeah. When we woke up in the morning, it was six degrees. Yeah, six degrees. 81 we, to six <clears throat> degrees. And I'm like freezing right. going, what is wrong? Yeah, <laughs> it's we should so talk cold. Let's talk a little bit about Albuquerque because it was pretty amazing. I did not realize Albuquerque was so hard hit. Um, by. Well, I, did I skip that? No. I mean, we're just getting on to okay. it. Okay. So, um. But I didn't realize it was just so hard hit by homelessness, addiction, um, just the, the drug problem there, the problem with meth, heroin, and whatever else the cartel's bringing in there is really, it's really tough on the area. So, so we went to, a, can I talk about this or did you have more? No, I just, so, out? no, you could talk about it. I just want to say my first part of yeah, go ahead. when we rolled into Albuquerque. Um, we First rolled into this little town and the kids, Isaiah looks out the back and he goes, mom, mom, why is that guy sleeping on that bench? And I turned around and there's a man, you know, just sleeping on the bench with his sleeping bag and, and, mm -hmm. um, and you could feel the weather. Like I said, it dropped yeah. right now. It's about 3 PM in Albuquerque. And, it's um, yeah. And I'm like, that's his bed. That is his, that's his area of where he sleeps. And, right. and so along the way with the kids, just even though we did street ministry for five years, you know, the kids have grown up with Isaiah. Mm -hmm. He was eight months when we started this. Yeah, he's only six now. Um, but it was more and more of them going through the process. They were understanding more because of their age. They were understanding, oh, Oh, they don't have a home to go to. Oh, they don't just go to the fridge and get food like we do. They don't just go get a pair of clean socks out of their drawer. And right. like it was just this whole process. You get dry when you get wet. Right. You get rained on. Yeah. And so as as we rolled into yeah. this town, the homelessness was everywhere. Every little little street yeah, that we in, went it was down. In your face. Yeah. I looked to the right, to the left. I was like, oh, my goodness, there's so much. There's people hanging out in the streets. and. But go ahead. You can yeah, go ahead and you can that. Just, So you can tell. Yeah, really quick, one of the things that hit Isaiah, our son who's six, is uh, loneliness. So that was one of the things that stood out to him in his impression of people who were on the streets. You know, he would mm -hmm. say, there's a lonely person over there. There's a lonely person. He, he started trying to identify, you know. Um, so that, that was just kind of interesting to see what, what hits the heart of a child, you know, and yep. loneliness was the thing that stood out to him the most. But um, we went to a part of Albuquerque that the city has called the International District, but the locals there call it the War Zone. And yep. it's because of the severity of um, gang-related crimes and the prostitution and the trafficking and the addiction that exists there. Um, and that's what I was saying before. I, d I didn't realize how hard hit Albuquerque is. And um, we stopped at a little place that we had coordinated with, a little place called God's Warehouse. Mm -hmm. And there is a little group of pastors there, <clears throat> awesome guys, and they're like a beacon of light in the middle of all of that stuff. They were. And, um, Pastor Edwin was ex -homeless is the homeless themselves. And everybody there has been in that, in that scene. They have been incarcerated, in, and incarcerated, yeah. addicted in gangs, and they have come out of it. They have come to Jesus, and they literally are trying to. Walking it out. Yeah, they are, they're, they're working hard to transform that area. Yeah. So they make, they make a little safe haven for people there. And, uh, you know, rolling in, we're sitting here and you have a lot of second thoughts because you're like, what am I dragging my family into here? I, you know, we've got all of our children and um, they had assured us, they said, you'll be safe here at God's warehouse, you know? Uh, so, we, so, so pause on there for a second. Yeah. So we roll out of the driveway and he's like, what have we gotten ourselves into? We're pulling these hoodies. I mean, come on guys, think about this for a second. Just throw this out there to you. Um, we had this download in our hearts that we need to go deliver 500 hoodies 
okay? Then I'm like, okay, well, how are we going to do that? We're going to put a hitch, a U-Haul, in the back of the car. Right. And we're going to figure out. I just knew that we were going to do that because that's what I saw, not realizing all the things that would have to go with mm -hmm. it, the van being so low, different things. And as we're pulling out, pulling, and I'm like, we just paid how much to be able to pull 500 hoodies mm -hmm. <laughs> and i'm thinking yeah. it's just a hoodie About it is just a hoodie <laughs> just a right pull. and yeah. the lord goes no it's life or death and i'm like wow like i like we're wearing hoodies you know and the process though and i'm getting emotional thinking about it he's like it's literally life or death for somebody out there and so yeah. It's he's talking about, <clears throat> hold on, he's talking about Albuquerque and pulling up there and the process. So that was fear sense one where Alex like, are, what are we doing? We pull into Albuquerque and I'm looking around and even though this guy said, you're going to be safe in here with us, you're going to be safe mm -hmm. with us. And, yeah. and I start to have this moment of, I brought my kids to this. I brought my family. I have my whole crew with us. And that fear starts to come upon you of, what the hell did you do? What have you done? What what were you thinking? And what, like, when she rather? Well, we we've been to the streets before, but we didn't we didn't. It wasn't common that we took all of our littlest children along with us. Well, we've been doing it <laughs> yes all, so. for five years, you know, mm -hmm. prior to that process. Right. But the littlest, and that's not true because Faith was six months when I took her for the first time. But. Mm -hmm. Um, we had three more, though, since first. We had three more. And, <laughs> and they're um, all with us. It was just that fear-based moment that you have to trust mm -hmm. that yeah. you heard correct. Right, you trust the Father. You have to trust that He's protecting you. And in that moment, my eye feels puffy. Um, in that moment, I saw our angels with us. I saw all around us this protection but I also saw that all of those people out there are his children too. Mm -hmm. and, kings and queens. Yes. Yeah, and kings that and they are protected too. Yeah. And um, <coughs> something, sometimes things are uncomfortable. Sometimes you're like, anyways. So as Alec went and got things prepared for us to get out of the car and all those things to go in, and connect with him. I didn't know what we were going to walk into. And I just knew that we were going to be safe. And that's what the mm -hmm. Lord said. You're going to be safe. And you're going to be okay. And um, you're just going to do this. So Alec came and grabbed mm -hmm. us. And we walked in. And it was a church service. Um, yeah, they're giving a little. They're giving a service. You know, at uh, God's Warehouse. And then they. Then everybody who's come in. Is is also um, is also fed, so they bring everybody into a cafeteria from there. But think about this for yeah. a second. It's not your normal church service. It's not, and this is how church, like, like we, I don't know about you, but I've been to many different churches in my life. I've never been to anything like this. Um, I literally walked in with the kids, and there, there's homeless <clears throat> all standing outside. And then you walk mm -hmm. in and they're sitting all there. And then as you get further in, you, you're you sitting, you're seeing these people sitting on these pews and sitting in these chairs and mm -hmm. half are yeah, there's coherent. No, there's half, no pretentiousness. It's as real as it gets. And I'm walking in and going, I'm, we're going to sit in the middle of this. Yeah. And we're going to <laughs> hear about Jesus or hear about what he's going to talk about. And... Mm -hmm. I just had to keep reminding myself that these are my brothers and sisters. These are my brothers and sisters. And <coughs> when I turned around to my left and I saw the mom with her brand new baby and her three kids mm -hmm. and they're in and out she's of the shelter her family in there, yeah. and she's bringing her family in there. <coughs> and um, they were, they were very drawn to us. That's yes. Funny. Everybody was, we had our kids and, just a lot guys just this whole process so we sat there alec got things ready for the hoodies yep. um they were gonna have a kitchen brought christmas party in the back the eating area whatever you call that 
And um, cafeteria, he guess. got up there for about 10 minutes and he got to share his heart. Yeah. So, okay. So that was an interesting thing. And um, I don't know how long we should keep talking about it, but that was, uh, <clears throat> that was just, that was awesome. So I got up and I shared and I, I just felt that God put it on my heart to encourage people that were there. And so I literally told people, I said, Hey, you know, you all are Kings and Queens. And that's what I said. I saw that when I walked in an angel was also sensing the same thing. Like these are God's children. We already know that, mm -hmm. you know, it's not, you know, we know that God loves everybody, that God includes everybody, that God is not discriminatory in any way, but it was just, it, there's a special place in God's heart for the people who are there going through those circumstances, I believe. And it was interesting to see because some people in there, just like anybody else, this is a little bit of a routine for them. You know, they show up because they're in need of something that's being provided there. But other people, it was interesting, even just in the few minutes that I got up to speak, they were in, in tears. And um, honestly, that was, I don't know, you know, I, I don't feel that I was profound, you know, or, or I didn't have a moving message. I just got up there and I said, I said, I want to encourage you all that you are kings and queens. And there was this one guy just sitting by himself on the front row, big guy, you know, in his hooded jacket, everything. And he was just, his eyes, like he was fixated on me. And his eyes just started welling up with tears when I said that. And there's just something about, about going in and obeying the Lord and bringing the, his presence. And you don't know what you're saying or how much it moves people, but you speak what's on your heart that the father gave you. And this is what happens, you know? And it was just, um, it, it, it's still something I'm processing actually, but it moved my heart to see how some people were really, really moved. You know, others you could see, it was routine, you know, but for some people, their hearts were really moved by the fact that we were there, the fact that I was speaking, so. And that we had our family with us. And we took our family with us, yeah. They've never seen that before. Yeah. You'll have people come in, but they're <clears throat> like, you brought your family, like, like we were good they, enough to be everybody with... everybody was so grateful yeah you know, regardless of how they you know everybody was grateful and everybody showed gratitude in there yeah like they just over the top yeah yeah so then we um Alec called us into the back and they had the table with all the hoodies you know the boxes were cutting the boxes open and we've got a hundred hoodies you know sitting up mm -hmm. there and they're getting the food ready, and the kids are sitting. And at this point, the kids are pretty much done for the day because we've been traveling and <laughs> and all of that. And I'm like, okay, guys, we're gonna get ready to hand out the hoodies. We're gonna we're gonna do this part, and and when we're done, we're gonna you know go and and just getting them excited about once again. This is what we're doing. This is why we're here. And and the guy comes up. Um, and the pastor and, and, um, what's his name again? Pastor Edwin. Edwin comes up mm -hmm. and goes, okay, I'm going to open the doors and they're just going to come in and just hand them the hoodies. And, yeah. and, um, so they quickly started to approach and we got things going and Raylena was there. Elijah helped with the littles and their two strollers and Faith helped me hand them out and, Isaiah and we very quickly. All our kids were good. They sat still. I was, <laughs> I couldn't believe it <laughs> after being stuck in the car already for hours. Um, they, uh, they within a half hour, we almost handed out all a hundred hoodies. Yeah, we were probably only like fifteen shy by that time, and then we started to go bring the rest into Pastor Edwin's office. And as soon as we did, people were shouting, "Hey, we need five more hoodies down here. We need." <laughs> And by the time I grab five more, I come down there. And by the time, hey, I think we're going to need like six more, you know. And finally, I was like, hey, listen, they're right in the office. You guys just go get them. Because at that point, them. we didn't have, Cause we, uh, yeah. It was getting late. And um, it was, you know, but it was a beautiful experience. And they welcomed us with open arms. And like, not a lot of structure, questions, anything. They're just like, you, you want to give us these hoodies? Great, you know. Yeah, you'll give away your hundred hoodies. Come on, you know. And. It was just awesome to be there. Awesome to be there, see what they're doing. And like I said, they're a beacon of light in Albuquerque, and that area is so hard hit. Um, and I will tell you, I, I will mm. be completely 100% honest because that's what we're here. Um, you have to be called into it. 
I, I, my, through this journey, I'm hoping that other, other, we're planting seeds and that you guys will get inspired to want to go do something in your community, in your area, or, or do something that we're doing. But you are trusting the process that, um, that, like, the Lord has called you into this. Like, He, I, I keep, thinking of the moments where we were sitting and the things where we were and how he divinely connected us to each place that we went we were protected like there were at some points where I'm like we are getting ready to walk into the den <laughs> and it wasn't a good thing like it was like that feeling of what are we walking into and I kept having the presence of the Holy Spirit and going you're good we've got you and, like, it took me to that moment, you know, where they walked into the lion's den. Like, they walked into that moment of not knowing what the outcome was going to be, but they knew they walked in and that they were going to do that. And um, the difference is, is they, so I guess that's not the correct, um, but that's that moment's how I felt. Like, I knew that the Lord told us to go to do this. We had the understanding um, that we were protected. We had the understanding that we knew, especially with our kids and being part of this. Um, and yes, everyone around us was great. I mean, there was, it was just crazy how he would bring someone along the way, a homeless friend to help us. Like in each community, they have people that they trust, all of them. And um, that was cool to see, actually. It was, yeah. yeah, how there's always those few people that the rest of them trust. And if they come and help us, they're like, oh, we can trust you. Like, so it was yeah, just. We, we get a local guide. I, we just felt like God set it up along the way. We'll explain yeah. a little bit more of that in a second. But like, um, so we I finished wanted to up... piggyback on something you Go said, ahead. which is just like, okay, so. So, I mean, I think that the bottom line is like if 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 God if if there's something on your heart, you know, then the Lord is probably calling you to go do this. Um, it's not like you should feel some kind of pressure or something. You should just if if a know. vision comes to you or an idea, something you feel that you can do that God is calling you to do. Um, if you need to spend a few moments confirming it with your Father, go ahead. But yeah, God is probably calling you to do something, and all it is is doing something within your power and if you do whatever's in your hand you know with take whatever's in your hand and do something with it um god is going to bless that like because you wanted to do something good something for his children so so yeah that's um <clears throat> i think angel angel talks a lot, a lot about courageous leadership and i noticed that a lot of the scripture says take courage so it's almost like courage is there for the taking you know, so in a situation where you find, hey, I have some ability, um, and that's all that we did. We had some ability, um, <laughs> you know, well, and all of you have come along to support us as well, you know, but Couldn't have done we, it without felt, you. <laughs> we felt that we had the ability to reach out to get some people on board and to go do this. So that was our ability this Christmas, and it doesn't have to be something grand. It can be if you have the ability to bring some food. Or if you see one guy that you've been seeing who's out on the streets and you're seeing him every day on your way to work, you know, that's, and it's it's kind of on your heart to do something. You don't have to solve all of his problems. You just, oh, thanks. <laughs> you don't have to solve all of that person's problems. You just have to show up with what you have in your hand and do what's been put on your heart to do. Um, and um, if you've been weighing it back and forth, that's what the take courage part is. It's just like, okay, you've been weighing it. Should I do this? Should I do that? Um, well, just decide to do it. And um, that's what we want to encourage you to do. So that's where you take courage. Um, in the mirror. Or in a back room. <laughs> um, anyways, with that said, so we left New Mexico. Um, we rolled out. And that's when the we really started to see the weather as it shifted and changed. Um, and then we were going to roll into Phoenix. Phoenix, Arizona. Yeah. And... Yeah. Um, we got to our hotel from Albuquerque and it dropped to six degrees that night. Yep. Yep. So I didn't know. It was just this awesome <clears throat> moment of Mexico. understanding that the Lord's like, <clears throat> Yeah, 
you had no idea that I was taking you to deliver these hoodies and how crucial and important it was <coughs> that they had these hoodies that they needed. So it was just so, um, can you get more in the corner? So sure. Um, anyways, holding the phone. So with that said, so now we're in Phoenix and, um, kind of a little bit more of a low key day in Phoenix. Um, they were all around as soon as we came in to the hotel, they were on every corner, our homeless friends, like they were there, they were at the bus stop, they're around the hotel, nicer area of Phoenix. Um, and, but they just like, it was. Yeah, we had we had, just everywhere. They we had were called again. and coordinated with um, a, a guy of Axe Homeless Ministry, mm -hmm. ACTS, and um, his name is David, and he he does ministry in the area there. So um, we went to the, an area around Phoenix called Mesa, and that's where he works. Um, so he was kind enough. It was Sunday, and <coughs> technically he wasn't working. But he was kind enough to kind of guide us, and he said, "Hey, Connect you'll us, find yeah. you'll find a lot of." homeless individuals who were hanging out at this particular park. So we went to the park and we took our hoodies and just did a circuit. And this time it was just me and Alec. We, the kids <coughs> needed a, a break and, yep. and they did so well. So they we did, dropped them off at the hotel. Dropped them off yeah. at the hotel with adult. <laughs> right. Raylena and Elijah and his sister Pam ended up coming and seeing us um, that evening. But we... We did. We took the U-Haul. We went to the park and we uh, loaded up a bunch of hoodies on our shoulders, went back two or three times, grabbed some more. Mm -hmm. Very, very more intimate. <clears throat> yeah, much more intimate. Change of pace from Albuquerque. And huge change of pace. Mm -hmm. um, Less structured. But really spending time with them, hearing their hearts. Um yeah more time to be able to be focused and just kind of get down in that moment and pray with them and hear their hearts. Um, what is awesome though, all these hoodies were, we've prayed into these hoodies. We've prayed and the presence of the Holy Spirit and just the love of Jesus that when they would put these hoodies on, that they would feel the presence of him. And um, so anyways, so Phoenix, we, we, we met with a, a couple that were there and then we, as we went around and we're not going to go into each detail, but yeah. there was a man that was there and I looked down and he had no shoes on, like mm -hmm. none. And he was very much alone. He was yeah. extremely alone, isolated, felt, yeah. felt isolated. You could feel, um, and he didn't want to be there anymore. Yeah. He wanted to end his life and, um, you could feel the, that yeah. and, um, the Lord kept, I kept, I just kept hearing Bob Marley. <laughs> Bob Marley and. and well, he had some cool dreads. Had, but I kept hearing Bob Marley yeah. and I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll run with that. Like, what do you want me to say? And, and about the music and the art and, and something that Alec, you know, it's amazing to see how we work as a team. How I'll say one thing and Alec will grab it and, yeah. and speak into it and Yeah, we were able to literally speak life into him that night and it's it's um you know, again, I know I know you know this, but it's more than just about the hoodies and it's Correct. about you know, it's about taking that and and using that to open doors because at first when we approached him he was kinda like, uh you know, nah. No, I'm you know, good. he was kinda he was kinda pushing us away with both his manner and his words. He was like, I, I don't want, I don't want anything. I don't need anything. And you're like, well, you, you sure you could use, could use a new sweatshirt. Oh, well, kind of little, could I see it? <laughs> and yeah, sure. I'll take that, you know, and that opened the door for us to literally sit down and talk to him. And this guy is brilliant. He has ideas and, and know some things, um, that uh, to draw, I don't know how to say it. She was able to know some things about him and speak encouragement into those Bob things, Marley. Those gifts. <laughs> Literally. Holy Spirit yeah. was like Bob Marley. I'm like, okay, I'll take this and run with she it. She started talking to him about singing. He started talking to him, yeah, I do like to sing, you know? And That's like his freeing moment in <clears throat> that time to be able to just sing. It doesn't matter who's around just to. Yeah, yeah. and he opened up. He opened up to us and. We were able to pray with him. We spent probably 45 minutes talking with him. 
totally different alone <laughs> totally different before moving on yep pace like this the night before was like go 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 we handed out almost 100 hoodies in 30 minutes and it was about three hours spent there but that night yeah. it was all about getting down in their space being face to face and allowing them to talk and i will be honest that's more his thing <laughs> I'm like, got the hoodies, pass them out. Okay, yeah. love on them a little bit. Able to get some and, practice, yeah. And in New York City. Mm -hmm. But I took the time and made, sat there, made eye contact, heard their hearts, connected with them, and um, it's just as I'm sitting here and we're talking about this, and I knew this was going to be a longer live video because we're sharing. But if I could give you a piece of the process, was cr it's crazy. I could sit here and we can do a live video. But to be able to explain to you the details along the way and the emotions and the process, I don't know how I could ever really truly express that. There's so much some heartbreaking moments and but that's a good thing yes and actually. the lord showed us along the way yeah, it's a good thing to feel and have your heart broken that um those who the father cares so much about so. he just kept showing us that every single person that i am bringing you to is a divine appointment is a divine moment and he just kept showing me, he's like, you guys started here. Like in this moment, right now, at this time, you are connecting with this person. It's the perfect timing. So we finished up Phoenix. We handed out, you know, hoodies. We connected. We laughed with younger adults and just different, just different atmospheres of people and addictions and just different things that we dealt with yeah. and, and a couple of guys who are artists they're living on the streets but so just us their tattoo work that they've done you know it, it just all, all the stuff. life and then i got asked a question we got asked a question from this man and um, he saw alex and he's <laughs> like he goes who is that? Oh, what is that? He goes, I think I've seen that in my dreams. <laughs> yeah, he was making a joke. <laughs> he was making a joke. and, and but yeah, Maybe I'll see that in my nightmares. But dreams, whatever. he said very <laughs> simply, and I'm just kind of summing it up. He goes, you know, I'm thankful that you're coming and handing a hoodie. I'm thankful that you're here. He goes, but you get to leave. We're still stuck in this. Like, you know, God bless you. He's like, you know, kind of making that like... You guys get to hand us something. God bless you. Love you. Walk away. So he that, goes, but we're still stuck here. That was Why? his question. Yeah, that was his question. So his question was, uh, he, but we we got the sense that it was his question. But he was saying he was saying he was, it in he a was third doing, party, that classic, like it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I had a friend who, you know, he's like thankful, but it but, was him. But he feels if Jesus, you know, you come and say Jesus loves me, and if Jesus really loves me, why am I still stuck in this situation? Yep. You know. And, um, so I had to, I, I, uh, we have this amazing school called SOK school of kingdom. And I jumped on and did a live video and I'm like scratching my head thinking to myself, guys, I need some, some extra something to leave them with. And, um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's a really great question. And I don't even remember, I'm sorry to disappoint, but I don't even remember how, how we went into that with him at the time. Um, we, maybe you do. We laughed right. and we kind of chuckled it off and we're like. We didn't laugh at his face. No, we didn't laugh at him. No, <laughs> not at all. It wasn't like that. No. I'll leave you with the wrong impression. Yeah. If they don't, if you, I think you know our hearts along this way in well, this journey. <laughs> in, 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 his, in his way of saying it too, he was saying now, I'm really, really thankful, you know, for this. And I feel like, you know, and I feel like to my friend, because he kept saying about his friend, but we just got the sense he was actually asking for himself. But he's saying my friend was kind of like, you know, 
yeah, you know, get out of here. If Jesus loves me, why am I still stuck in this situation? And what he's I, telling us, he's saying, but I'm telling my friend, no, you should be grateful to these people for bringing you something. So what I meant you by know? laughing, he mentioned his shirt <clears throat> or his hoodie, and he talked about a picture, and we brought it around full circle. Like we, I connected and took pieces of what he said and how he was connecting with Alec and how he was connecting mm -hmm. with me, and we made it a story. We, even though we knew it was him that he was making the comments, not just the person um, or a third, you know, somebody else. And we connect, we made it joyful. We made it um, fun, playful. It was, it didn't have to become a serious moment of, because it's, it's a tugging on your heart. You're like, oh crap, you're right. We handed you a hoodie. We can pray with you. We can love on you. We can um, be here. But that's right. We are leaving. And we do have somewhere else to go. We have. And I didn't have the answer for we him. Don't, yeah, we don't have all the answers for all but these questions. Yeah. I could be the joy and the light. I could laugh with him. I could have connection with him. I can make him feel special in that moment as much as I could. The Lord just very simply said to me, show up. Show up. Be the hands and feet. You're in the perfect moment at the perfect time. Um, you don't have all the answers. And I'm the type of person where I want to find the answers. I, I want to give them what they need to get where they need to go. I want to speed up the process if I can. Yeah, fix, fix the process. <laughs> and um, I wasn't. Find it, fix it, and move on. Yeah. I wasn't meant to do that. But you can't. Yeah. I was meant to show up, be there, and love on them. <clears throat> yeah, people are dynamic and the situations that they're in. There's a lot of complexity into how people have gotten to, to where they are. You know, maybe, maybe, maybe it might not seem complex to us. Like some people will say, well, you made a decision and that's how you got to where you are. But you know, what goes on for a person sometimes in the decision-making process or what they feel Lots they can of and can't help. Yeah. Every story is different. So, <clears throat> those are things that, those are things that you show up with the presence of God and, what happens is God is continuing to make himself known to people who are in the most desperate situations so that they can find their answers in him, not find their answers in um, money or even housing or food or, you know, but they can find their answers in him because that's really, he is the God that can work out complex issues that are happening in people's souls, like things that, that can't just be easily fixed. You know, you can throw resources at a person um, but that doesn't necessarily fix what's deep in their hearts. Yeah. And so when you show up, you, that's what that's what your father is doing. If he asks mm -hmm. you to show up, he's not saying you have to fix the situation. You just need to show up again with my presence. Okay. Maybe tomorrow somebody else will show up again with my presence. Another piece. I will continue to call more right. of my family because I'm reaching out to this person who is also my family. And you have to trust the father that that even though a person is feeling that, and if, and if a person is feeling that way, like what this gentleman was asking, you know, that's good. That's good because he's, he's looking he's for an in answer. A searching, he's yes. in a place of searching. And if he is in a place of searching or seeking, he will find, you know, the father is making himself known. And that's one of the reasons that we show up in those situations. And I have to remember that it's a team. <clears throat> right. We all have a piece to bring. Right. And as long as me and Alec are bringing our peace and we're doing what we are feeling led that we need to do, the next layer and the next piece will come also. Right. Um, as long as mm -hmm. we're doing our peace. So I had to remember that. Like when I so wanted to give him what he was asking or leave him with something extra yeah. or the fix yeah. or fix the problem and remembering, Angel, you did what you needed <laughs> to do. You guys did what. And so the father just kept layering that process. So mm -hmm. we got back to the hotel. We delivered um, hoodies to the people. We connected with Axe Ministry. And um, mm -hmm. the guy that was directing us there. The yeah. guy that directed us there. We got to have a conversation with him. We got to um, just connect the, the rest of the hoodies to him and his ministry and that process. And then... We get there to um, the hotel and we see like there was five or six at the bus stop and we're like, hurry up. We have yeah. like 
you know, 15 minutes before his sister gets to the hotel. (laughs) So we we run, we jump over, we get to the corner. Yeah, more people in homeless. And um, we just show up and we, they're like, where'd you come from? Like out of nowhere. We got some hoodies for you. You want some? So there's... Just the whole process. Yeah, we're but climbing over some rocks. Climbing over rocks and Sunny. cactuses. Yeah. Cactuses will poke yeah, you in the butt. Just that. FYI. Yeah, we're in Phoenix. Right? <laughs> so. um, Alex's like, don't step there. Yeah, don't touch that. And I'm like, yeah, ah. you have to give a little more space than you think you need to. Yeah. But. So, so that was Phoenix. And then we rolled into. California. Los Angeles. Good old yep. California. I'm from California. Right. So, sorry, so I keep playing with skin on my lip. We lip-less. did not actually connect with any other service or ministry in LA. Um, we decided to go right down towards Skid Row. Um, and that's that's exactly what we did. That's what we felt. I yeah. called multiple phone numbers. I connected. I tried. I... We had our list of who we were going to. We had friends in Los Angeles. We had this, that, and so on. And at the end of the day, that was not at all the plan. So um, we... We just went as a family. We knew what we needed to do. Mm -hmm. And... um, It was cool how it came together. So we rolled right into downtown LA. um, And we started driving right towards Skid Row. And we, um, just as we're at the threshold there, at kind of one of the bounding streets, I think it's Third Street, um, there's a parking lot right there. And I'm like, oh, this is great. You know, it's like $7 flat rate, you know, uh, 24-hour parking. So we pulled in there. So? And already. I don't the, know if you're covering the speaker. I don't think you are with your hand. I don't think so. Can you hear me? No, so we immediately pulled in there and... Um, Pulled into that lot, and already you could see tents and shelters that that. Um, oh, it was all around us. The it was like had a, set up all around. It yeah. was like a third world country within the United. It, it, like, yeah, that's was, that's how it struck me too. Is like this is like the third world within the first world. Yeah, and in, interesting how it just it just sort of mixes right into downtown uh, Los Angeles. So. So we got there. We got into the parking lot. We pulled in, and uh, <laughs> there's already like a guy. Um, he's experiencing some mental illness. He's he's cussing so at me while I'm Alec trying to go was pay, greeted for, with, pay for the you parking. Effer this, yeah. that, and so on. And I'm like, I'm like, well, it's it's okay, you know. It's like, I'm glad that he says it's okay because yeah. I'm he's getting the the stuff all done. I'm having a oh moment in my head. We're yeah. down by Skid Row. We tried to offer him a sweatshirt. All of this stuff, and I'm thinking. So work. I was having another one of those fear moments that. The, the heaviness of fear because I started reading up on Skid Row and I started. Mm-hmm. It's been there a long time. I, yeah. since 1930 and all the things that I started reading and. Yeah, everybody's experiences like don't talk to, the, there's people Don't make eye writing, contact. Yeah, like, don't make <laughs> eye contact. You know, don't get too close to a homeless person. Yeah, all the things that we already yeah, we're somewhat going there know. to do exactly the opposite of all that. Everything they said not to do, we were going there to do. Yeah. So, <laughs> and I'm thinking, so, but here's it's interesting. Here's the cool thing, though, is we knew not to walk down the main strip of Skid Row. We knew certain things to be smart and different things. So, we were going to stay on the outskirts of Skid oh, plus Row. Plus, it goes for miles. It, it literally goes for miles. It does, but there's yeah. one strip that they literally, no. what street that they say that that, that they is. They identify it goes, yeah. Where the sign is, where it says Skid Row. So, um, so we started. We found the parking lot right on the edge. On the really edge. Really fortunate. On the two, outskirts. Three of our boys had fallen asleep in the car. Our three youngest. Yeah. So fell asleep we were like, in the car. This is probably a good thing right now, you know. But Faith, who is um, seven, she got out. She's like, "I want to go with you guys. I want to go." So Angel, me, and her, and Elijah, and Elijah. Yeah, Elijah is sixteen. So Raylena yeah. stayed with the three smaller. In a locked, like in a mm-hmm. parking in area lot yeah. with our guard dog. <laughs> I'm being funny. Pounds, She's yeah. exactly 19 pounds. Um, but she will give you a run for your money if you come up to the car. Um, anyways. Literally bark worse than bites. Yeah. <laughs> but we could see her and the boys yeah, the we, whole. We stayed within a couple blocks. Yeah, we could yeah. see them as we... Um, 
circle the area. But <clears throat> so this was cool because we immediately um, began to approach some of the tents. And the first person we met was this wonderful woman. Her name, we're just going to call her V. Because that's what she said her name is. and She called herself Big V. Yeah. So Anyways, but she is so she's, little and petite. She's not big, yeah. But she is a trooper in the area. She is like, um, she's a little mother hen for everybody there. She's like, well, I can help you if you want. And this is like, Angel was mentioning this before, how God literally would send us somebody. So as soon as we got the hoodies in hand and we started walking, she comes out and meets us. And we're like, we're going to give away some hoodies and so on and so forth. She's like, oh, this is so great. You know, she's like, she's like, I can help you. Can I help you? And I'm like, we would love to have your help. Do you know, like, so, so, so she immediately takes us on a tour. So pause on that for a Everyone second, though. Living in that Prior block. to that, I was having a little bit of a panic moment. I was having a little bit of that faith and fear moment of was I going to allow faith to happen or was I going to allow fear to set in? And the dude's cussing at Alec and I'm like, okay, I... I'm good. We can go. We don't have to be here. We can go somewhere else. Are we really meant to be in this area? And that in that moment, the peace of just the Lord and him yeah. showing me, look, you are equipped for this. You have mm -hmm. your angels. I've called you to this. You, you're good. You're good. So mm -hmm. our, friend, our friend V took an extra sweatshirt for that guy. Uh -huh. He's like, you know what? He's having a hard time right now. We're like, we, yeah, we understand, you know. Uh, because you don't know. You don't know what a person's been through out on the streets in the last 24 hours. No. You know? he, and his we, we bark. We really don't know unless we're His bark was bigger yeah. than his bite. So yeah. she's like, I'm going to get him an extra sweatshirt. And I don't mean I know to say it. His... Like, but you know what I'm saying. Yeah. That, yeah. Yeah. But she was like, I know where I know where his stuff is. I'm, I'm going to put it right over here on this fence and he'll get it. Trust me. He'll she get was it. the mother. She was like, literally. Great. That's absolutely that's great. She was the mother of the area. Yeah. Like he sent us the one to she, and she walked with us guys she walked all around with walked us that through, whole circled yep. area that and, whole block we gave away just on foot over 40 we were at 48 hoodies i think just yeah, around that just little around block that little area from all the people there and people <clears throat> came out of their tents she would call people you know oh and um, she she goes it was so awesome she goes up to the little tents and she's going Christmas hoodies, Christmas hoodies. Who wants a Christmas hoodie? A free, brand new Christmas sweatshirt. And and she just, she was totally God sent. Yeah. I was in awe of how much he, yeah, it was just awesome. So she went through it with us. And, and, then, and then she goes, oh, what time is it? And we're like, She's like, at 2 o'clock, I have to Three, be at work. Was, and I'm like, it's 3.38. She's like, I was supposed to be at work at 2. <laughs> <laughs> and we're like, okay, you know. And, and I was worried. I was a little scared for her. I'm like, I don't know what she has to do yeah, where to make a is living she going? out here. Yeah. So I'm like, I hope she isn't We're hoping trouble. she wasn't. And she hurried off. I mean, yeah. like she all of a sudden, it was like, and then about 15 minutes later, we see her just we see her with, avidly sweeping the sidewalk. We see her with, with gloves on. Yep. We see her with gloves, a broom, and she is cleaning up the surrounding area, making oh, yeah. piles. Like she, she cares it's for a her huge area. Pile of garbage too that she's already swept up, and oh we're like, yeah, oh my goodness. And I'm thinking, does she do this every day for the amount of garbage is there? And uh, after that, we didn't bother her. But I was, I was so glad that that's what she's doing for work. I'm not going to elaborate, you know, because I just, I was yeah. worried for her, you know, and that's all. I'm like, the the look on her face was like, you know, I should have been there at this time. I guess I can go in at three, but it's three thirty, you know, and then she's waiting, but, but she hurried off like with a mission and I'm like, I hope you know, she's going to be okay. Hope she's not and, doing something that's harmful, yeah. you know, or somebody else is and this, being harmful to her. And the story, I mm -hmm. won't go into the story, but I have her in the picture and we're very careful, very, very, very careful with the pictures. We're not bluntly taking pictures with people like that. You don't go and just take pictures. I mean, like I, some, I would ask some, I, um, yeah, and get it's some, okay, it's okay, but. but you don't go someone and what they're walking through is not something 
so Have I always, to yeah, I always wanted to make sure that we got footage for you guys and we could share the journey and share the process, yeah. but it wasn't smacked in their face that I'm taking pictures of their, right. Don't. their hard. Yeah. Mm. So their circumstances. Yeah. And, um, <coughs> so she, she, her story was crazy. I have it in there. I have it written. She was actually a doctor and, um, studied biomedical technology and she was very 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 Research. smart yeah. and all that she said because you know you can tell when somebody's making fluff of something and and then you got somebody and she's just the way her brain and how she was talking and it was just so everybody has mm -hmm. a story like everybody has a story nothing is cookie cutter all the same everybody has a process and a journey and why they're there and some are shocking um, so that was, oh, oh, oh. And this was the fun part. All of it, all of it was crazy, exciting, sometimes scary. Sometimes we're doing this anyways, because we know we're called to, but so the boys wake up, they're like, we wanted to too. And Isaiah did at one point, he woke up and came out with oh, yeah, us he and, came walking with us for and, a while. um, yeah. then the boys wake up and we're like, okay, well, we've got, you know, another, roughly you know 50 hoodies to to hand out so we're gonna go drive down skid row we're gonna you know mom's gonna hand them yeah. out a window and relina's gonna hand them out the Pulling window our little u-haul trailer through downtown la <laughs> and as we're doing that as i mean because yeah. they're everywhere it's starting to get dark now everywhere everybody yeah. are rolling merry christmas free christmas hoodies brand new who wants one and they're coming up to the window yeah. and we're ready we got them all on our laps we're mm -hmm. Are passing them out and all the kids in the car are going yeah, or we Merry out. Christmas yeah. and yeah, we jumped out in a few places. Well, one of us at a time. So Lisa was in the running car. But <laughs> <laughs> and um but that was that moment. Well, we drove her blocks around. Yeah. I took a picture behind us and I'm like, what did like what did we what are we doing for Christmas? We are passing hoodies out of our window as the kids are saying Merry Christmas and Feliz Navidad and just like you know, we're, yeah, they're, they were saying it in Spanish. They yeah. were singing and and that what was a the kids' idea is like, how do I say Merry Christmas in Spanish? Spanish? Yeah, and just Feliz letting Navidad. like this is memories that we will always remember. That they will always remember. Mm -hmm. I get emotional thinking about it again. But so with that said, we ended that in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and we gave away all our Los Angeles hoodies down there. Yep. Yeah. For sure. So and, we gave away a hundred. And um and then and then uh we finished up the next day. Well the next day was Sacramento. We traveled into Sacramento, mm -hmm. went a lot longer than expected. We got there. Um, it was dark time yeah. and I'm like, I do not want to pass out hoodies in the dark. dark. And, and it was raining and it was pouring yeah. down rain, but we did. And I up. heard, I heard it very clearly. <clears throat> it's life or death. Like I need you to go out and pass out some hoodies. Like we didn't realize again that it was dropping the weather freezing. And, um, so we got there there and Alex shared it, you know, in the post that I posted yesterday, they had a little fire thing going on and, and we passed out about 40 hoodies and we again parked across the street, all in the rain, yep. my mom and dad, five people with a little fire huddled over a little that fire, was just one, a yeah. rubber grill. That was our first stop. Yeah. They were shining a light on us across the street. They had a flashlight and they're like, what are these people doing? You know, cause we're kind of in their space now and they're exposed. They're out there on the street. So. And yeah, they have a right to want to figure out what we're doing, pulling a car up across the road. We had some family meet so. us in Sacramento and, um, and yeah. get there. My dad gets there. My mom gets there. And my dad's like, okay, what are we doing? Like, you know, and at that point we put all the hoodies in plastic bags because we didn't want them to be mm -hmm. wet. What's the point of handing out a wet hoodie if they can't, you know, yeah, put it on. So we, uh, we got wet though. And we were soaked, <laughs> but that's okay. The hoodies are doing pretty good. And we kept the hoodies as dry as we could. Had a lot of stories in that short period of time. Handed mm -hmm. out, I think, about 48 hoodies. And um, 
felt it was time to go because it's really dark now and just, you know, being smart. Kids have been with us all day, headed home. And the next day, we actually started up in Placerville. Um, Which near is uh, about 40 minutes east, would you say? 40 minutes east of Sacramento, Placerville? Um, yeah, it, it's, it's... It's a small town, but... Small town, experiencing a lot of we had heard about Yeah, we had heard about um, how bad homelessness has been there in the last year or so. So we already kind of had it in our minds to go there because it's kind of close to I already know. where Angel grew up. So with that said, we were, that's what some of those pictures were. It was mm -hmm. another moment of craziness of looking at. Um, <clears throat> and then we worked our way down to. There, there was an encampment up on a hill um, and it was all muddy, kind of wet and cold. So we found a trail going up and we walked up the trail and we started talking to some it's of the people crazy there. how much was up there. It Angel's was. using her voice to call out, you know. Free hoodies, Christmas hoodies. My my loud, and my loud. Uh, it was that was another thing. Yeah. First 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 yeah. people that met us, three guys came out of a tent. One dude was, didn't have a shirt. on. I was on. surprised because it was so uh, so quiet up there, and I'm like, oh, they were one, all hiding out. Two three guys. <laughs> like, yeah, they're just they're taking shelter in a tent. One of the guys didn't have a shirt on at all, um, and uh, yeah, I'd love to have a hoodie. So we gave him a hoodie and. We even offered him another one. He 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 didn't wouldn't take more than one. No, no, it's okay. You know, okay, cool. But on the way back down, we saw he had his new hoodie on. It's kind of gratifying. That's all. You know, he's, he had his brand new hoodie on. He's out working to secure and resecure the that, ropes. That's the coolest the shelter, thing. The we had yeah. people within that moment throw their hoodie on, seeing them in it. Yeah. Like they they weren't just taking something that they didn't need. They needed what we were giving them. Yeah. Um. So then we worked our way back down to Sacramento because we wanted to finish up down there. Right. Back down to where because there's a lot of tents and shelters down in downtown Sac. <sighs> Crazy stories. Priscilla, the one of the pictures yeah. that I posted. Yeah. She looked at me and she was. She's like, I'm just gonna end it. I'm and just gonna end it. I'm done. Spent a lot of time. I'm with gonna her. end it. And she crying, praying, crying, crying, crying. And she just looked at me and she's like. Just pray, pray for me. I, I know, I know, I know prayer works. I, I know. Mm -hmm. And she was talking really fast, you know, and just things like that. And I just looked at her. She's having such a hard time. And she was soaked, soaked. I mean, completely soaked. Had her cart of stuff. She's like, this is all that I have. I just lost everything 48 hours ago. My trailer that I had blew up. And she was sharing her story of what she was. She's married, and she's she had to call a restraining order against her husband, and just all it because they're both making doing things with substances that and she you know, and she's sharing all that, and yeah, they're struggling with that, and, and she just all of a sudden looks at me, and she goes, "What is your name?" And I said, "Angel," and she starts sobbing, sobbing. And everything that the Lord has been telling me through this journey, like at the right moment, at the right time, and this, that. And she goes, Jesus brought you here to me right now, right now in this moment, right now. And I looked at her and I'm like, yeah, we traveled 32 hours to get to you right now in this moment, right here. And she's just like sobbing, sobbing. And she's like, and she goes, and Angel, of all your names could be, your name is Angel. <laughs> and um, and it was just this aha moment. Like, I'm standing there with her in all places that I could be and giving her a hug. And she goes, I don't know how it's all going to work out. She goes, but you standing here right now shows me it's going to be okay. And I'm just like, whoa. <laughs> Whoa. And of all people, I got to be that person. So, mm -hmm. um, but, and it takes me to one more little quick story. When we were in, um, in Skid Row the day before, that was the one moment that I got out. I saw a man with his blanket and all this stuff up. And I was like, I need to go give him a hoodie. I got out and I leaned over him and his eyes opened up and I said, can I give you 
a free sweatshirt or free hoodie? And he goes, oh, yes. And in that moment, when I locked eyes with him, just like with Priscilla, in that moment, it was like that aha of, oh, my goodness, I traveled all these hours just to be here in this moment. Actually encounter that person. Yeah. That's pretty amazing. Like, I'm just, I'm still, I'm still all these days later. You can tell, okay, so that that particular gentleman, you know, literally angels going up, you know, within a few feet of him. And you can tell he's used to having people pass all mm -hmm. the time. He's completely, like, just used to being ignored. Yeah. You know, it took him a moment to actually realize that she was there talking to him. And it was like, you know, it literally kind of snapped him into... A moment of he had beautiful she's talking to me. green eyes like his eyes were just this and it was crazy because it was like i saw this moment of jesus like and my you know my special time my intimate time with the lord it was like when his eyes opened and i saw his eyes i was like yeah it just jesus so it was just really cool like but um so here's our journey. We shared a little bit. I know it's we've been on here a long time. There's so much that we could share. So many stories. Yeah, there's a lot more. We wrote about some other things too. It'd be know. actually really cool to do a live video with the littles. So I'll I'll do that at at um, some point and have them share a little bit of what they walked away with because faith. Mm -hmm. They've heard more cussing. Like, those are naughty words. Yeah. Faith is like, that yeah, was okay. not nice. Okay. <laughs> and yeah. and Isaiah's like. A few people like told us to get away in yeah, no and I, uncertain terms. And Isaiah was like, but mom, he's really sad. Yeah. He's really sad. He really picked up on how lonely people were. And um, and never did, and you know. I don't know, think we gave him that word. I think it was something he. No, just, that's something he picked yeah. up on. But never did anyone ever yell at the kids or yell <laughs> or anything like that. No, it was just being picked up on around as we. The kids were never scared either. No, they were so. Just, just us some of the time. <laughs> the kids were like, hey. Yeah. But that's what shows you. Like they, the innocence and. It was just amazing to take them along this journey. And um, we were well protected along the entire way. And the father kept showing that. And every moment along this. So I I don't honestly know how I will ever, um, like I said, still processing. Still just spending time with him. Writing things down. The journey along the way. And all of you that gave to do this, all of you that donated a hoodie and got to be part of this process, you were all with us. Yeah, thank you for joining us on this. Like, we couldn't have done it without you. So, like, and um, I think we were at, I think we have 46 more hoodies that... Um, we are um, asking to still be donated for. Um, already hand-delivered to those 46 people. Um, but I think that's the coolest thing. Like, we just knew that we were on a mission. And whoever got to come along with us mm -hmm. um, got to be part of this process. And I'm asking that the Lord abundantly bless all those that have been a part of this. And um, he, yeah. And I just, I keep sharing that you will be able to get a sense or a feeling of what we did and what we got to be part of and that you are all part of that. So anyways, thank you so much. Yeah, this was a you. really long video, um, but who wants to watch Bits and Pieces will. And thank you for coming along with us. And um, and it's it's been a crazy, exciting journey. Mm -hmm. We leave on the first we roll out on the first, um, take four days to travel home and, um, and this will never be forgotten. Like we're like, our is this going to become the, the Christmas, the, the new Christmas, um, it's going to become tradition. Christmas tradition. Yeah. <laughs> Don't mm. know yet. We'll have to see about that. But, um, the kids have see been making happens. comments about that 
are we going to do this every year for Christmas? Is this what we're going to do now? And I'm like, oh, I don't know, but we'll see. Yeah, Christopher, um, I see a, a question from Christopher. And hello, everybody. I'm, I'm kind of tuning in to some of the comments, but hello, Kedron and Robin, you can send him Frank, a private message, yeah. Jen. Love you guys. Thank you for watching. And Christopher, um, the sweatshirts that we brought out to the streets are just blank sweatshirts. They're kind of like this one that I'm wearing. Um, this you could buy at creaturethreads.com. So that is my clothing line. That but, also gives back. Right. And so we give we give a, a portion of the profits um, to homelessness, to, to support individuals who are out um, ministering to homeless individuals. So I hope I said that right. But um, yeah, so there's that. Okay, the, the ones that we gave away on the streets are blanks. Uh, we didn't want anything necessarily distinguishing on those hoodies um, or promotional or anything like that because sometimes it just becomes an identifier where people will look and say, oh, I just happened to notice that all the homeless guys in my area are wearing the same, you know, and now they kind of look and be like, oh, that, you know, I, that guy's. So we didn't want anything to like identify people on the streets or make them stand out in a way that somehow ends up casting negative light but if you're so, wanting to donate same, same hoodie no prints if you're wanting yeah. to donate one of the hoodies i'll put it on here it's <laughs> it's it's a black hoodie we've already passed them all out mm -hmm. um the goal was to raise 500 of them that we passed out so i'll put right. a link on here for the gofundme um if you yeah, want to donate are, one of those we are still covering um we are still raising funds for that to cover the remainder of the hoodies we're almost done um, and then we also have travel expenses. If you would love to support us in that, we would love to have your support. So, so, um, so Christopher, I will put a link in here. If you have any other questions, um, just message one of us, message me or Alec. Um, yeah. Thank you, Jen. I see that creaturethreads.com. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Um, I already said all that. Love you guys so much. And like I said, longer video but we had to get on here and share something yeah. and some of the journey so and we'll share a couple more things like i said it'd be fun to get the kids on here and kind of hear what their takeaways were right. and all of this their raw impressions yes so we don't know what they're gonna say <laughs> no. um all right guys love you all so much thank you we will talk to you soon all right bye